what a night of fights we had at UFC 267 and UK fans like myself are in for a little treat because it started at 4 o'clock you know, in the afternoon instead of 2am which was very nice, you didn't have to you know, set alarms and ruin your whole Sunday to try and watch the fights every week like most of us do. So it started off with Lerone Murphy knocking out Amir Khani which was brilliant so England got a nice win on the record but uh, it was all about Hamzat for me, this card and what a clinic he put on. But before we get into it guys, remember if you haven't subscribed to the channel, make sure you do. Like it if you do enjoy the video. Let's get into it. So Hamza comes out, all guns blazing, he's super happy. You know, Li Jing Liang looked really up for it as well. And, and I made a video on this and it did quite well on the channel. It did, you know, it did really nice, a lot of comments, a lot of people going, you know what, don't doubt Li Jing, Li Jing Liang. And I was kind of doubting him a little bit, but not because of his body of work, because he's been in the UFC a while. He's the most successful Chinese fighter, I think male-wise, other than Zhang, obviously, but she's female. But male-wise in the UFC of all time, he's, his face is a brick. He is so goddamn tough. But I just rate Hamzat so high. And he came into this, and within five seconds, he got the lowest double leg you'll ever see. He gets down, he drops his body weight so fast and picks people up. And Lee defended the first one. He managed to spread his legs, he managed to back it, back himself up. And the commentators were like, ooh, okay, what's gonna happen here? And then all of a sudden, he gets picked up, ran across the cage, slammed in front of Dana White, and uh, Hamzat does what Hamzat does, what he's done to John Phillips, what he did to Reese McKee, you know? He just, he grinded him out, smashed him to bits, and then, you know, he got the choke. And he, he put up a little bit of a struggle for a while, but Hamzat is just so goddamn good. You know, he, he, he really is. He, he is an enigma because he said to Dana White, you think I'm a wrestler, don't you? But wait until you see my striking. And he punched Gerald Mershaw once and sat him on his ass. He is a complete enigma. I love him to bits. I think everyone does. There's a, there's a post I saw where he's now 2.7 million Instagram followers. Kamara Usman has 2.6. Hamza has the X factor, he really does, and I don't feel bad for Li Jing Liang because at the end he was clapping, he was like, you know what, well, this guy is the real deal. But the question is, what's next for Hamza? Because a couple names have been thrown out there, he did an interview with John Gooden afterwards, which Johnny G's is back, love it. So, Michael Chiesa is a name that popped up, and Neil Magny is a name that popped up. Now, for me, both make sense. They're in the rankings. He wants to fight everybody. I don't, he, you know, he's not going to jump to the Leon Edwards, to the Jorge's, you know, to the Gilbert Burns's just yet. One more fight, definitely can because of his star power and the fact if he does another smash and grab, finish, grindy, crazy fight you know, that we know he can do, he'll definitely get it. Because why put him against people he's just, you know, he's going to be when if you put him against Leon Edwards. Can Leon defend those takedowns and avoid that? Can Leon implement his game upon him? Can Jorge do that? Jorge and Leon have much better takedown defense than Lee Jing Liang does. And Stephen Thompson, for instance, does as well. Gilbert Burns has managed to get him down, so maybe Stephen Thompson versus someone like Kamzat. But then do you really want to do that to Stephen Thompson? Because if it's just such a, a mind melt, because you don't want to see all the guys everybody loves and adores in this division that need those wins face Hamza, you want to see Hamza face the people nobody likes. But everyone loves Hamza and that's how it's going to work from now on. I think him versus Michael Chiesa is a good fight. Michael Chiesa has a style that he could do well in, even though he just lost to Vicente Luque and he got submitted in that fight as well. He looked good before that. He looked a bit rushed and panicky, but I think that's a good fight. I think Neil Magny is also a good fight because Neil Magny is coming off a win against Jeff Neal. He lost to Michael Chiesa. So you know, Robbie Lawler before that, so, but these were, again, I'm not sure where Neil Magny ranks in these, because Neil Magny has cardio for days, he's a long individual, he's got extremely good technical ability. Hamza can beat all these people in my head. He can do, I can't see anyone except a Gilbert Burns, a Leon, or a Kamaru giving him problems. I think, I think Jorge could give him a few problems, but I think at the end of the day, Hamzat's wrist control, his grappling is so incredible. I know, and he's got a blue belt in jiu-jitsu and it just shows that 
there's more to ground game than just jujitsu to these people, you know. Well, I know he's from Sweden, but he's also he was born in Chechnya. He is all right. He is a you know a Russian with that horrible beard that just strikes fear into everyone's eyes. <laughs> if anyone you see anyone with these beards, you just panic. You don't want to fight one of these beards, and that's the point. Who do you guys think comes out to fight next? How impressed were you with him? Do you love him as much as I do? I'm fully on board the hype train of him. Um, except when he fought Leon Edwards, then I've got to back my boy. But other than that, thumbs up for the win. I want to see him personally fight my, face Michael Chiesa. I think that's a good fight. Um, you could argue Neil Magny because he's coming off of a win. And you don't want to face, you know, give Chiesa someone not coming off a loss. So, other than that, Vicente Luque is an option. But I think the, the two names that were called out were probably good names. He says he's going to smash up everybody, you know. Let him do it. The last thing I do want to point out though is that he did technically miss weight the first time. He had a really rough weight cut. So I'm hoping this doesn't happen again because he tried to do the old tower trick and he dropped too many pounds that we knew he was cheating. So he did weigh in eventually at 171, I believe. I think he came in at 170. It was only 0.5 pounds over, like, all right. It is what it is. He's still overweight. But then he cut down to, I think, 166 by holding the towel. <laughs> so it was like, how did you drop five pounds? <laughs> so. Uh, other than other than the towel issues and, and weight cutting, as long as he gets his weight cut crisp, because he's a massive welterweight, uh, hence he fought a middleweight as well against John Phillips, then I think uh, I think we're golden with him. Remember, guys, subscribe to the channel if you are new. Like the video if you have enjoyed it. Comment below. Let me know, guys. Share it around. We'll see you in the next one. Cheers, guys.